Hey, Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Just watching a Facebook post going back and forth online, and people were asking about rooftop units and how often you should check the charge on a rooftop unit. And the answer is just simply this. It should be checked when you initially commission it. So when the system's first installed, it should be checked for sure. And then the last time it should be checked is when you dispose of the unit. And really in between that, there's no reason that you have to put gauges on that piece of equipment and check the charge. And that's because all of it can be done with temperature testing and as long as you get a benchmark, it's extremely accurate. I just wanted to show you that in this video here real quick. So what I've got is I've got a, um, this Aerosys equipment, which is made by Carrier. It's a R22 unit, and I was putting it together for Blue On about a week ago. I charged the system up and I benchmarked it. So what I'm gonna do is, is um, I've got a set of probes here, and if you want, come over here for just a second, take a look down here. I've got pressure probes connected, but you'll see that they're not on. So I've got the, uh, the, high, the liquid line, the suction line pressure probe that are connected. They're not doing anything. I've got up here, I've got a supplier probe. I've got a couple manometers here. On the side over there, I've got a return air probe where it's going in the side. And then on the, on the front side of this, I've got a, uh, an outdoor air probe. And all of the pressures on a machine, everything's driven by return air temperature and humidity and outdoor air temperature. Those are the two driving forces. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hop on and in MeasureQuick, we do a project, so I'm going to just go into MeasureQuick Cooling, and I'm going to select our non-invasive test and just use cloud data. So in this, I'll just type blue on, and you'll see the blue on trainer, and then I, I've got two units here, one that's R22 and one that's blue on. I'm just going to select the blue on conversion and start the project. Now, in the profile, it's just going to, it's just asking me here, I think, probably what kind of heating I have here, and it's just looking for a heat type, so I'll just say none and hit submit. And then you'll see everything else is filled out. Uh, it's asking me now to take measurements. So I'm gonna go to my home screen for just a minute and activate my probes. You'll see in my probe manager that I have a suction line and liquid line, supplier, return air, outdoor air, return and supplier statics, no, no pressure probes. When I go to the home screen, you're gonna see I have blue needles right now. And the blue needles are there to signify that um, what the pressures would be if we were actually measuring them. And those are driven by the outdoor air temperature and the return air temperature and humidity. So if I go to my superheat, my subcooling targets, now you'll see there's a superheat of 13.3 and a subcooling of 10.5. That's the targets that MeasureQuick is looking for and those are from the benchmark. If I go to the project, you'll see if I go back here to the, uh, to the system profile and up itself, you'll see that the cooling profile is benchmarked at the top. And that's because when I started this up, I benchmarked the system. So now going back here, what it's looking for is based upon these return air and outdoor air conditions and these subcooling and superheat targets, it's looking for a suction line temperature of 50.2 degrees and a liquid line temperature, well, actually we'll tap on the target. It's looking for a calculated target of 44 degrees plus or minus now on this from 38 to 56 degrees because it's a TXV. So it's got a wide range. It's looking for six to 24 degrees of superheat on the TXV would be acceptable. And the liquid line though, for subcooling, it's a very tight target of plus or minus three degrees, right? And the reason we have a wide range for the superheat is because you could have a, a 100 foot of line set and it's going through a hot attic one day and a cold attic the next and the superheat will vary because you can't control superheat after the bulb and this is a total superheat calculation. Now, just to show you how accurate this is, You'll notice here it's 46 and 158. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the probes now for MeasureQuick. And I'm gonna show you how accurately MeasureQuick will calculate what the pressure should be. Right now it's saying they should be 46 and 157. When I turn it on, you'll see the actual pressures come in. So we'll kick these on here and the needles will change color. So they're blue now, and you'll see 46, 157, and it just went 47 and 155. So you can see almost no change um, when it actually went from the estimated pressure to the actual pressure, and now our actual superheat is 12 and 10.5. So again, it's, it's all spot on. It just automatically switched over. As soon as it senses pressure probes, it goes, hey, you're no longer doing a non-invasive test, and you're in an actual uh, invasive test, so it just switches the mode automatically. But Hopefully you see in this, you understand that there's absolutely no reason we have to put gauges on a machine because if I can calculate what my liquid line and my suction line temperature should be, and they're within their allowable ranges, 
then the refrigerant charge is where it's supposed to be, the superheat and the subcooling is where it's supposed to be, and equipment now will operate for years without losing refrigerant charge from connecting and disconnecting gauges every time or accidentally leaving a cap off. It's a sealed system, we want to keep it sealed. This is Jim Bergman for MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.